All right, so Mr. DeLeon, your motions are lost in the system somewhere. Joy. So are you all uh, okay with proceeding without his yes. physical motions? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to give you the sure. Judge can kind of purchase um, the conditions of bond that have already been uh, put in place. We're going to go on the record. Court is calling CM 114217, 114220, and 114222, State of Texas versus Virginia. Cerna, can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Michael DeLeon for Ms. Cerna. And are you Ms. Cerna? Yes, ma'am. We are here. Council for a uh, bond reduction, is that correct? That's correct. Just for the record, Your Honor, uh, originally Ms. Cerna was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Her bond was set at 15000 uh, That occurred early in 2023. She, in late October of 2023, picked up three charges of aggravated robbery, which we very much dispute. And, let's, and, and because of those robbery charges, um, her original bond on ag aggravated assault was remanded without bond, okay? Mm -hmm. So okay. today we're going to just one moment. And the court will also be calling 2023 CR 5815. You may continue counsel. And today judge, we're going to be asking that a bond be set in her aggravated assault charge and the associated uh, aggravated robberies are set at 75,000, which is highly excessive. Um, before we go to the facts of those aggravated robberies, uh, we're going to be asking for a bond of 10,000 each on the aggravated robberies, given the circumstances. All right, and what bond would you be asking for on the aggravated assault? It would be ideal to reinstate her bond at 15,000, but we will go with whatever the court wishes us to do. All right, and State, are you prepared to proceed? Yes, ma'am, we're ready. Any witnesses? State or defense? I mean, None, Your Honor. I do have, um, I'd like to uh, give the court a packet I can do it one or two ways either. Uh, and I've shown this to Mr. Wilkins, um, a series of pictures and I've marked it a defense exhibit number one. I can have my client identify it or as an officer of the court, I can identify what those pictures are. All right, any objections to defense exhibit number one? Uh, no objection, Your Honor. All right, then the court will set uh, exception to evidence defendant's exhibit number one. And what the, if I may, Your Honor, what the court is looking at in defense exhibit number one is um, the first photos are of the three complainants in the case. The very first picture is Christopher Cooper, who is the biological son of my client. Um, he was not raised by uh, Ms. Cerna, but they are biological. And um, the other two are friends of Mr. Cooper. Um, additionally, you're also seeing social media posts of the various complainants and their um, various photos with weapons, with smoking blunts, with uh, putting up wads of cash um, with those weapons as well. And uh, lastly, there are injuries to Ms. Cerna's arm that occurred during that robbery. And we do wanna address that um, when we get to that point. But um, that very last photo is a kind of fresh photo and it's kind of hard to see in the black and white versus color, but, um, she right. was uh, cut by one of the complainants. The court sees defense exhibit one with the alleged complainant listed. The court sees what appears to be the complainants holding AK 47s and Glocks. Yes. And then the next photo appears to be the complainant who is the defendant's son holding cash, wearing pants that are 30 sizes too big, that are sagging. Then the next photo appears to be two complainants with someone with a gun, but there is no face to the person holding the gun, pointing the gun at them as they smoke blunts and photograph the person pointing the gun at them. Then the next photo appears to be someone holding a gun. And I believe that's the complainant that is listed on page three of defendant's exhibit number one. And then the court sees photographs 
with no face. So I don't know, I'm taking you at your word saying this is your complainant, but there's no face, but it appears there's no talking by you unless you're under oath. But I do see photographs that appear to match the mark that's on your client's arm. But again, her face is not pictured in defense exhibit number one. As an officer of the court, I will say that I've talked to my client. Uh, she has identified the three complainants, that being Jonathan, Joseph, and Christopher being the ones in the photos. Um, and I'll also point out to the court that these photos taken from social media were, um, were my, my client got those before, while she was out on bond um, and was able to forward that to me before she was taken into custody on these new aggravated robbery charges. Okay. <clears throat> Additionally, Judge, if you look at the facts and circumstances of the case, I know we're not here to litigate the entire aggravated robberies, but there's an allegation that Ms. Cerna and her husband pulled out guns um, after inviting her biological son and his friends over to a La Quinta to see a just under two-year-old stepsister that was born that Mr. Christopher Cooper has never met before. Suddenly a robbery occurs allegedly um, with firearms by Ms. Cerna and her husband allegedly. However, if you look at the facts and circumstances again, La Quinta management throws out everybody out of the hotel. There's an argument going out in the parking lot um, when supposedly my client and her husband have firearms, yet somehow these complainants are hanging around in the parking lot with them when they've just been threatened with firearms. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Additionally, um, Ms. Cerna does have that injury to her arm. She was cut. Once again, if she had a firearm, she wouldn't be in the position to be cut by uh, Jonathan Vidalas, uh, who is a, in fact, all of these are, well, actually, uh, Jonathan and Joseph are juveniles. Mr. Cooper is, I believe, 18 years of age at the time of this uh, event in October of last year. But um, the circumstances are very suspect, Judge. So without going in, and obviously this court is not going to make a, a judgment on, on the veracity of if she's guilty or not guilty of those specific aggravated robbery charges. But given the circumstances for setting a bond, we believe that because of the nature of the the weirdness essentially of this uh, allegation, uh, we're asking that bonds be set uh, of $10,000 on the aggravated robberies um, so they can be litigated down the road. Uh, and we'll see further in the future if, and, and this case is unindicted. He's, Three charges have been unindicted for the past roughly 60 to 90 days. Um, we will see if the district attorney's office will even go forward. I mean, obviously, Mr. Wilkins might know more about if they even have complainants that are going to be continuing to complain in the future. So based on that, Your Honor, and the circumstances, we're asking that the a bond be set on the aggravated assault and uh, a lower, much lower bond be set on the aggravated robberies. Obviously, if the court wants to do GPS, that is more than fine. We will... Uh, we might ask the court to reduce or um, waive GPS fees, but uh, if the court wishes to do that, we need more. Uh, Ms. Cerna will certainly comply with all GPS conditions. All right. State. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we are asking that you double the uh, bond on the aggravated assault deadly weapon from 15000 to 30000 And we're asking that on the aggravated uh, robberies uh, that you keep the bonds at 75000 each. Uh, we're also asking that you, uh, she has these uh, conditions of bond, the special conditions of bond, Judge, that I attended to the court. We're asking that you uh, keep the GPS with full house arrest uh, in place, no contact with uh, the complaining witnesses and the aggravated robberies, uh, Jonathan Gonzalez, Joseph Berrientos, and Christopher Cooper, uh, a prohibition on possessing firearms. Um, and Judge, I, I've previously attended to the court, the police report. I didn't watch those. But I have uh, stickers here if you'd like to if you mark those as states exhibits one two and three yes, and defense have you had a chance to review those documents we have your honor no objection all right then states exhibits one two and three are admitted and of course defendants exhibit number one is admitted and you can tender those to the court reporter i've reviewed those okay, yes, so uh just recently, and i'm sorry just so the record can be clear those were reviewed before they were offered into evidence and both the defense and the state requested that the court review those. 
before they were offered into evidence. Objection. Could I just um, say briefly with the argument uh, the, in the police report, these are uh, very serious allegations. We're asking uh, that the bond be set at, at this high or kept at this high number uh, in order to protect the community. The, the code says that you can set reasonable conditions of bond. Uh, we think under the facts alleged in, in this uh, police report, uh, these are reasonable conditions, this amount, as well as your full house arrest GPS. Uh, and if we, uh, if you were inclined to grant a lower amount of bond, we would ask for the, still ask for the, the other conditions, the full house arrest GPS judge. But um, I, I reviewed those pictures and I had, I think some of the questions that maybe the court had too, you know, this is a safe picture. I don't really know what this is depicting. Um, this could be an airsoft gun. This could be a real gun. These guys could be uh, engaging in blunting or this could be tobacco. Um, a couple of these guys are juveniles, so if they, they have guns uh, in these pictures that are undated, I think. Um, we don't know when that is. It's there's. I don't think any allegation that at the time of the offense, uh, October 27th of 2023, that any of the complaining witnesses uh, had guns at the time. That's not in any of the police reports. Um, so, Your Honor, in order to protect the community, we are asking uh, for those bond amounts, uh, as well as the full house arrest GPS, Your Honor. And lastly, Judge, if I may, yes. what I forgot to mention was nowhere in that police uh, report does it say that anyone beyond the complainant said that Ms. Cerna and her husband had firearms. The hotel manager was told she had a firearm but never saw it. So I okay. want to be real specific about that. And, and just briefly, I mean, when I was reading the police report, if you're in a hotel room, I don't typically invite the manager into the hotel room. So I don't know how we would see if there are guns or not in there. This is as everyone was exiting all the parties. Okay. So is there anything else from either side? No, more things. No, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to keep the previous con conditions of full GPS. I'll ask that the fees be waived. For the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, I'm going to set the bond at $25,000. And that is cause number 2023 CR5815. And CM number 114217, the court will reduce the bond to 60000 And that's based upon what the court has reviewed in the police report. And cause number CM 114220, the court will reduce the bond to $60,000. And in cause number CM 114222, the court will reduce the bond to $60,000. And there's to be no contact with, is your husband Ruben Serna? Yes, ma'am. There's to be no contact with Ruben Cerna. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else? Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Ms. Oh. Ferguson, uh, we need a jury trial date, a quick date on this case. State, how long do you expect this trial to last? Three, three days, Judge. All right. So that means it'll probably be two days. <laughs> the earliest date you have. All right, we'll come back with jury trial on February 6th. If you're still in custody, you will be brought over in trial dressed in whatever civilian clothing you have at the jail. If you wish to be attired in something else, you'll need to do a clothing exchange. Mr. DeLeon, if there's an issue with the clothing exchange, let the court know. Yes, Your Honor, we thank the court. All right, and do you know if your client will be going, if she were found guilty, do you know if she'd be going to the court for punishment or the jury? We haven't discussed that yet, Your Honor, but probably the court. All right, on Eric Lopez. All right, thank you. Thank you.